because of the way you've taken care of us in the past week. Thank you because of your mercies. Thank you because of enabling us to begin another week in your sanctuary. We honor you this day. We pray, Father, that your presence will remain with us. As we share your word, we pray that, Father, you will speak to our hearts. And Father, that the message that comes forth will enable us to go on in, in this journey as we wait for you to return. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Shall we sit? May I take this opportunity to uh, thank the vicar and the elders of this church for giving me this chance to come and share the word of God with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you well? Yes. I'm Isaac Karoga, for those ones who have forgotten, a sinner who has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. And I'm glad to be with you today. And today we are going to share a lot from the two readings. One was from uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 17, and the other one was from Luke 12, 32 to 40 and I've titled my message put aside whatever is holding you tightly put aside whatever it is that is holding you tightly you know with the the beginning of or the advent of COVID we who are businessmen we came into another kind of business eh? But the way we normally conduct our businesses has since changed. For example, we used to get uh, customers coming from outside Nairobi. When they come to the city, they do their shopping and then they travel back with that. But nowadays, they make phone calls, they send money, and then as we put their goods together, and they are taken to them as parcels. So one of the things that we are doing nowadays is tightening, eh? tying the goods together so that they get there intact. So that when you put them in the vehicle, eh, nothing will be lost. We tie our stuff together so that eh, when, when that stuff reaches wherever it's going, that person will, will have a hard time in opening it. Eh? Uh, they have to cut down the strings, remove the tape, and all that. And uh, that's how it is with us Christians. Sometimes we are entangled, we are tied tightly by certain things that are making us not go in our Christian journey the right way. We are being tied in such a way that we are forgetting Christ or we are even forgetting why it is that we were created or our purpose in this life as Christians because of the things that are tying us down. One of the things that tie us down as Kenyans is anger. People are so angry. There is lack of forgiveness. You are angry with the government, the way you are transported in the Matatu, we are angry with our neighbors. We are angry with our spouses. So that we are so full of bitterness that that thing is now holding us tightly. We are like that thing that needs to be opened up. We are being held. Another thing that is holding people is addictions. People are being addicted to alcohol and uh, substances that they they can't remove themselves from that situation another thing that people are getting addicted to nowadays is gambling we are seeing it everywhere everyone is on their phones they are gambling on soccer and sports they're trying to make money out of that eh? so them they are entangled they are being tied tied down tightly by something Another thing that is tying us down as Christians, that we cannot exercise our Christianity well, is politics. 
people are busy talking about 2022 and they are realigning themselves. If you find people in an argument, sometimes you wonder, are these Christians really? How many of us know that you're going to be alive in 2022? We are being tied down by the politics of the day. The other thing that is tying us tightly is our quest for this earthly wealth. People are looking for wealth in such a manner that we are forgetting that we are Christians. You can do anything. This search for wealth is tying us down. Not to forget COVID-19. That is what is now holding us down more tightly. People are afraid. Will I live tomorrow? Yesterday we got some news. Eh? One of our close friends lost a mother to COVID. So we are being told, don't even come here uh, because that family needs to go into isolation. COVID is one of those things that are tying us down tightly. The writer of Hebrews was writing to encourage Christians and he's writing to them and telling them, even though you are living in a place that is full of persecution, in a world that time that was persecuting Christians, you're not yet dead. And that is why you should go on with your race. That's why in 12 verse 1 it says, as for us, we have this huge crowd of witnesses around us. So, so then, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and the sin which holds us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. We need to put aside those things that are tying us down so that we can move forward as Christians, so that we can ruin this race. The thing that he mentions here is that sin which is holding us down. When he talks about sin, it could be a, gen, a, a particular sin that is disturbing you, a hidden one. Could it be hatred or anger? People have committed many sins that are hidden. We are told to get rid of that. We remove ourselves from the hold of that sin. The particular sin that is being talked about here could also be the original sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. You know, we are told that from one man, sin came into this world. And from Jesus, we get salvation. Could it be that we are being still held by that original sin that was committed by Adam that is now in our DNA? We need to get rid of these things so that we can see eternal life. And for us to be able to excrete, uh, remove ourselves from that hold of our sins and those things that are making us not win this race, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because he, when he came, he won this race. He kept himself pure. He did not mix himself with these things. No wonder we are being told by the writers of the writer of Hebrews that we need to drop some of those things that are holding us back. We need to drop some of our friends because some of them are the ones who are misleading us or they are the ones who are adding those strings on top of us that we can't get out of it. We need to drop some of the activities that we do. We need to get rid of our addictions. You see, see, these are very difficult things to say because I am also in one of these categories of those things that I need to drop. And it will be painful for you to drop some of these things. But that is what now we call the Christian discipline. As a Christian, you need some discipline in order to get rid of these things that are holding you down. No wonder we are being told in the book of Proverbs 3, verse 11, that God 
disciplines, the ones that he loves. So we need to accept the disciplining that he brings to us. When he tells us, get rid of this thing, get rid of that addiction, get rid of those friends. It is his discipline. And he only disciplines the ones that he loves. We should be afraid then, if you are not getting disciplined by God, because it means we are not part of that group that he loves. When you go to the Gospel of John, of Luke 12, 32 to 40, Jesus, who is God in person, in the form of human being, he came and told his disciples this, sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. That's in verse 33. Provide yourselves a pass that don't wear, passes that do not wear out, and save your riches in heaven where they will never decrease because no thief can get them and no moth can destroy them. In our quest for wealth, we should never forget that our investment should be in heaven or in heavenly things. Because these things that we are chasing here on earth will one day come to an end. But whatever we are waiting for in heaven is forever. So how, how is it then that you want to be tied down to these things that we are looking for and they are going to only give you some temporary comfort on this earth? And in the long run you lose eternal life which will be forever a life of happiness. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. You see, if you read Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, it says this, I advise you then, buy gold from me, pure gold, in order to be rich. Buy also white clothes to dress yourself and cover up your shame and nakedness. Our true wealth will only come from Jesus. We need to put more effort, more of our time should be invested in searching for this Christ so that we may not lose eternal life. What is it that is holding you down? What has entangled you? You need to get rid of that by fixing your eyes on Jesus. And that way you will be able to win this race. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you because of your message. We pray, Father, that you will give us courage to get rid of those things that are holding us down. These things that are holding us so tightly that we may be free to follow you and free to invest more of our time in searching for you. We worship you and we pray all this through Jesus Christ our Savior.